Hello, my name is Bill Windsor. I'm with the Colorado Mycological Society, and I'm an amateur mycologist. And what is that exactly? Uh, amateur mycologist is someone who studies mushrooms and fungi. So you've been collecting some this morning. Can you show us what you've got? Indeed. I collected some for the exhibit here. We have a number of mushrooms, uh, everything ranging from Rusula mushrooms to one of our choice edibles, which is the Belitus edulis, uh, commonly known as the King Belit or the Porcini mushroom. And you can eat that? Ah, uh, these are delicious. How, how can you tell when you can eat a mushroom? Is there any uh, way of knowing or do you have to be an expert? Uh, it takes a little bit of experience, but there is a way of knowing. And essentially you use the features of the mushroom itself to identify it. For example, with the King Belitus, you're going to be looking for a large fleshy cap with this orange-brown coloring. Underneath, you'll notice it has pore structure rather than your gills that you have on other mushrooms. And then finally, the last feature to differentiate, let's say between two similar mushrooms, would be the stem. And in this case, you see the stem on this one is very different from this. So on this, with the King Belitus mushroom, the stem has a very fine netting on it as opposed to this mushroom, which is a lexinum, has little scabers on the stem. So you really have to look at all the features of the mushroom, the cap, the gills, the way the gills are attached, and the stem. Now, one of those you can't eat, is that right? You cannot eat one, one of One of these we don't recommend. Uh, some of these are good edibles, lexinums, but there is a lexinum that grows in Aspen, uh, which is where I found this one over here in the Colorado Rockies that is poisonous to the point that it would probably create diarrhea and vomiting for maybe about 24 hours. Sounds to me like you really need to know what you're doing. You I, do don't, I can't really tell doing. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the diversity of these species and, and, and particularly in the National Park because we are here at, for the Bioblitz. Correct. So within the National Park you'll find different uh, zones ranging anywhere from uh, high alpine to subalpine, alpine where the trees are. And even with the alpine, you're going to find different zones according to the life that grows in them. Uh, mushrooms tend to associate with specific plants and trees. It's called a mycorrhizal relationship in which the plant of the mushroom, the mushroom itself is a fruit of a plant, so the plant of the mushroom grows underground and it interlinks with the roots of specific trees. Now the Belitus mushroom, or Porcini, tends to have a relationship with pines, uh, particularly spruce, spruce trees, dug fir, ponderosa pine, but basically you'll find this with pines, whereas the Lexinum mushroom tends to have relationships with well, any number of trees, but this one in particular had a mycorrhizal relationship with aspen. So within the different zones, you'll find different mushrooms. What can you tell about the health of the ecosystem from looking at these species? Well, this year is a very dry year, and it shows up in some of these. This mushroom cap, for example, is normally, let's see, rounded more like this. But what we're seeing is a lot of the mushrooms are drying up because of the heat. And we have had an unusually warm and dry year. In fact, we're in the middle of a warm and dry period. Um, whether this period ends up being permanent is hard to say. Ecologically, there is some evidence that Colorado was wetter, cooler, and damper about 100 years ago up to about 20 years ago when the climate was shifting more towards what we think might actually be a normal of being a little bit drier. But you couple that with the you know, warming trend that's going on globally, and it definitely is going to impact the mushroom and mycelium growth because the mushrooms need damp soils in order to survive. And while there are mushrooms that are specific to dry regions, the Colorado Rockies is, is really not one of those regions currently. How, if people are interested in studying this field, how do they go about it? If young people are, want to become scientists who study mushrooms, oh, what's, what's Certainly the through any of the universities, you could uh, essentially go into biology, uh, plant science and specifically into mycology or a great way is simply to hook up with a local mycological society uh, they exist throughout the state and throughout the country 
So if you hook up with a mycological society, basically it would be called a mycological club. Uh, you'll get to meet folks who are very interested in the mushrooms. They'll know what they're doing. And they can introduce you to identification, help you uh, determine you know, what are good edibles and what are not good edibles. But beyond that, you can start getting into the science of the mycology itself, which is really fascinating about how mycology interacts with other species and with the ground and the environment. Well, thank you very much. It seems like it's a fascinating feel, and you can learn how to find something delicious to eat. Very much. You can definitely find something that's great for the dinner plate. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.